So Wilbur, how did you get involved in, in the game of basketball? Wow, um, it started out obviously when I was younger. Um, I actually started out quite late. Um, my first love was American football. So I didn't really get involved in as far as basketball heavily until I was about 14. At the time I was about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. And um, I, I guess I outgrown American football. And um, a basketball coach came to me in Philadelphia and um, basically said you need to be playing basketball. I started playing, I had a natural ability and uh, I guess the rest is history. I guess he felt that your size was too good to miss out on. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I've, I've been blessed with, you know, a lot of athletic ability, I guess. And uh, like I said, he called me as a uh, young age. And, you know, nowadays people are playing basketball from like four, five, six years old. I mean, I, I've dabbled in it before then, but I didn't get into organized basketball until I was 14. And uh, the coach down in Philadelphia got me on a team and uh, has progressed it from there. I take it he was one of your, your role models. Well... I wouldn't say role model. My father's always been my role model. But as far as somebody has took me under the ring, John Harnett in Philadelphia, that's the gentleman I'm speaking of. Him and Frank Greco, my high school coach. And uh, yeah, those two guys kind of just pushed me along in, as far as through my high school career, as far as getting me better. And then Philadelphia, is a, it's a bunch of talent in Philadelphia anyway, growing up, playing against a, a lot of NBA type players and guys overseas. So I naturally improved. How did you end up crossing the water? Well, you know, after I went to high school, obviously I was pretty good. Went to St. Joseph's University, had a pretty good college career. Um, from then on, naturally, pro natural progression, I um, ended up in Sheffield, played overseas. At the time, I was thinking it was going to be maybe a one or two thing, year thing, go back and get a nine to five. One year led to two, led to three, led to 11. Mm -hmm. And I went from playing in England, getting a passport, becoming an EU citizen, going to Germany and Greece. So, I mean, I had quite a fruitful career in being able to see the world. How did you find Sheffield? I guess there's some parallels of Philadelphia, both are, are industrial cities. <laughs> yes, both of them are hardworking cities, industrial-like cities. Um, it's quite different, um, obviously. You know, Philadelphia being quite large, Sheffield is not as big, but um, it was nice. Being my first experience uh, away from home as far as overseas, it was nice to be in an English-speaking country. The people in Sheffield was quite nice, and we had a winning team. So I had fond memories of Sheffield, and um, yeah, it was good. Because you do have a couple of winners' medals in your pocket from yeah. that time. I tell these guys because, you know, I'm the old guy now, so a lot of guys that's on the team now don't remember when I was here the first time. But I have quite a few medals from my time in Sheffield and Brighton when I was here, my, my first stint in the U.K. And I try to tell, like, guys like Rob and Blue that you know I am a winner but um, they fail to realize that. This is quite an irony you have a winner's medal about the same time the rocks were getting off the ground. Yes exactly um at the yeah when I when we was winning Edinburgh Edinburgh rocks and uh and the likes of Ted Berry and Billy Singleton and stuff like that and they were just starting and the, matter of fact my last game in the UK when I went over to Brighton was against Edinburgh and uh, they beat us in the, in the playoff final so yeah it's it's quite an irony actually. You moved to Brighton so you work with one of the most colourful characters that BBL seen, Nick Nurse. What were your yeah. memories of Nick? Well, Nick Nurse, well, first of all, before Nick, I um, actually was um, hired by um, Ronald Creedwall was there, and, and um, I was there and I had a pretty good pretty good season. It was up and down, but uh, we rose from it. Then Nick Nurse came in for my second season. He's quite a character. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, a lot of people have different opinions of Nick Nurse, but I respect Nick Nurse a lot, actually, because um, Despite what a lot of people say about him, might think about him. He's a hard worker. He's a mover and a shaker. So uh, you probably regret some of the things he may have done. But his main goal was trying to basically help the BBL. Rather than win about the right way, that's not for me to decide. But I respect him. And as you see, he's still moving on. He's doing pretty well back in the states. Of course, uh, somewhere uh, along the lines, probably inevitable that you're going to be involved with the Rocks at some point, considering you've worked with. F former coaches, firstly Steve Swanson, and then mm -hmm. Tosin Liebenat. Yes, yes, like it's a small world. Basketball, you seen, end up meeting each other along the path, always up and down. Um, like I said, while I was in Brighton, Steve was assistant coach with Nick, and uh, obviously he moved on to here. And throughout the, by the time he was here, I was in Germany at the time. He would call me on the phone, try to get me back coming over. And uh, and then obviously, who else? It was Torsten. 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 Torsten was my coach in Gießen, my first year. In, uh, in Germany. So, yeah, and he also came here. So, it's a small world. And then I, down the line, I'm back here. So, and both of them have caught contact with me since I've been here and congratulate me, saying I should have been here three years ago when they both was coaches. But, you know, things happen. Both were quite fiery characters when they were in charge of the Rocks. Did you experience any of that fire when you worked under them? Steve is funny because everybody sees Steve, he seems like real buttoned up and quiet. But yeah, he'll, he'll snap on you in a minute. He, he's real fiery, but for a reason. Like if he don't yell at you for for nothing, like if you if you're doing if you're in the wrong, he'll he'll let you know. He has a lot of aggression. Um, Torsten, Torsten's a classic German. He's just 
fire and brimstone. He hard, hard, hard. He works hard, play hard. And um, both of them are great guys, and I wouldn't mind playing for either one. Because Tulsa was trying to convince all of us when he was here that he he, he's, he was like this back, back in Germany because the referees all, all often the wrong end of his uh, outburst <laughs> at yeah. times. Was he like that in Germany? <laughs> well, uh, he probably was taken back when he came here and saw the referees here because. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, but yeah, but the, the referees in Germany used to give him a hard time, and he used to actually do go at the referees quite a bit. But like I said, once he got here, he probably was taken back a little bit more. Um, yeah, he's always been like that. He's he's a fiery character, and he, like I said, he he know know nothing but working hard.